So I'm recording this after having reviewed all the images um, a day or so after the survey. I think it's really interesting survey in that there is a damp internal wall where chimney breasts used to be. And it's really important to understand that chimney breasts are made up of bricks around a hearth that are deep in the subfloor. There's a lot of brickwork in the cold subfloor and therefore you get heat loss. In this case the chimney breast has been removed but a couple of holes have been left for some reason and it could have been vermin, we, we don't know. Uh, the problem was exacerbated by having a bed up against the wall. So you've got the, the cold air from the subfloor being trapped against the wall and any vapour from the inside the property will find its way to the, the coldness of the, the bricks but you won't get the benefit of heating from the warm air current. So you're getting uh, heat loss up against the vapour from the rest of the property. The bathroom extractor fan was good but had a very short overrun uh, a, a minute or so I think. Uh, the, the kitchen had no uh, externally ducted extractor fan and clothes were being dried internally. There were a lot of signs of condensation and mould throughout the property so we already knew that there's a good chance that condensation was going to be the root cause of the problem here and then the, um, the lack of subfloor humidity as you'll see later on uh, on the data lot on the um, subfloor hygrometer uh, the lack of rot in the subfloor void if you did have groundwater which is the root cause of rising damp then you would have high humidity in the subfloor uh, and you would have a, a high risk of of rot and there was there was none of that although i would say Keep an eye on those timbers. Um, you don't want to spend money on, for instance, putting a floor overlay without lifting the timbers and having a good look underneath. I would also recommend keeping a hygrometer probe in the subfloor. I left you with one at the time of the survey. But just keep an eye on the numbers. Make sure that they're, they, they will fluctuate a bit, but you want it to be typically uh, below 85% relative humidity. Uh, the other thing is I would keep a little hatch access to the subfloor if you ever do put an overlay on. You don't want to have rot. There is a risk of rot because you've got a lot of uh, solid floor around a small section of, of flooring that, that isn't covered by solid floor. I, I recommend you um, get yourself one of these. They cost about 20, these cost about four hundred and fifty pounds, mm -hmm. uh, and this, in my opinion, is better. And it costs twenty two or twenty three pounds, and it's really worth getting because what you can see. So I don't know if the um, well, so you, you'll be able to see whether the um, the dampness is coming down uh, by by logging it. Just just make a measure. And then um, take a note of the of the um, percentage on this. Mm -hmm. But you'll find so with this one, uh, it tends to go in sort of different phases. So you got the background reading on this wall is twenty two percent. You get to seventy five eighty, and it and it starts uh, making a noise. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I've got it on the wrong setting, so always good to know it's on the masonry. So, but it'll be more or less the same. Yeah. Um, and then as you go down, it, it hits 100% there. Uh, and then, and then it's there. So it's, it's in a sort of, um, I, 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 uh, mentally map a wall. And in this case, it's, it's going up round like that. And this is where the old chimney breast was. Um, 
You'll see if you look at various reports of mine, you, you'll see me discussing hygroscopic salts. Those are, are very um, uh, defined areas of dampness, whereas yours are, are, are not particularly defined. So it doesn't strike me as being um, caused by hygroscopic salts. Then you've got the, this this brown staining is because of water coming through the um, timber. Yeah. Uh, and although somebody, some people will describe it as rising damp, um, it's not. Uh, so you've got the these. Is the, those, that's the heating system, yeah. is it? Uh, I mean, actually. So you've you've got um, some. some early signs of rot. But actually, you know what? Th this is plaster, this isn't timber. This is, somebody has filled this in to, to hide damage to it. And actually, it, ironically, you won't, you won't expect me to say this, but it actually looks worse than it is. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hygrometer in under the hygrometer probe um, and we'll just leave it to, to see what the humidity is under there. Um, I mean, if I, if I were to guess, I would say that uh, that was either formed by a human for some very strange purpose or it was uh, a rodent. Yes. Um, but it looks too small for a mouse, which leads me to believe that it's probably a rat. But, um, but I presume that you don't have it anymore. We, we, we have had a rat. We don't anymore. Um, next door also had a rat. Uh, what, on, on, on the other side of this? On, on, the, on the opposite side of the house. Right? Uh, so this is concrete floor here. And this is uh, so and these are floorboards. So this is amusing because I've only looked at this bit where the floorboards are, and okay. then gone great it's floorboards, and not looked three feet over at the concrete. <laughs> uh, okay, good. So uh, I'll put this back the high um, the hygrometer probe into there. And actually, what, what I tend to do is just put a little bit of something just to just really want to keep the the, the vapor, as it were, in there. Um, OK, and then go and see you next door. So what they've they done is they just plastered over it on their side. Um, and then there's yeah, there's the epness. It's coming behind the chimney. Yeah. Can I just go? Yeah, yeah, please. Sorry. No, it's fine. So you, you have got some dampness, but oh, here we go. That's a bit more. Okay, and and do you know if there's a, a um, an open? A uh, hearth behind it, or is it just closed off? It's just oh, behind this? No, it's yeah. completely closed off the walls. Okay. Okay. I I knew it was a chimney, but I we never I never undid it. I undid the one in the lounge and put a a new thing in. So coming back to your side, we're looking at a thermal image where red is about five degrees warmer than uh, blue or or purple. There will be some flare flow by the time we're done. How many bikes do you have? Uh, only the one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Here are some interesting thermal images at the back of the same room. Uh, I'm going to put in the ones that you took yourself so that you can compare them to uh, the areas of mould and condensation.
So we're just calibrating the data loggers here. Uh, it's got uh, salt and a bit of moisture and uh, showing 73% relative humidity. 75 is the normal. So we got a lot of mold and signs of condensation, rust. This is the plaster is beading. Uh, obviously a lot of plants, uh, any water that goes into plants, is going to come back out as moisture. So this is uh, dry lined, but you're going to get heat loss in the corner around the windows. Uh, and then, I mean, it's not so bad there. I'll just go into the corner over here. So the thing about this wall is this this is a hard floor, isn't it? It's a solid floor here. Um, and then there's no, this. So when you've got a solid floor, uh, it essentially um, exacerbates any condensation because it forms on the floor and then goes up the wall. We'll look next door. So lack of ventilation is your key issue. There's no extractor fan externally ducted from the kitchen. The bathroom extractor fan works well, but it's short and 90% of humidity remains in the bathroom after a shower is taken. The door should be kept closed to ensure that the vapor stays in the bathroom. I would just keep the vent running for at least half an hour. Use the data loggers to find out you know, how dry it is and look at the dew point because that's the critical thing. Uh, so on the outside, you, you, it looks like you are getting some penetrating damp because that's where you're getting the brown staining. Th these are um, calcium sulfate salts that are blistering through. Mm -hmm. So water, well, this is semi-permeable or impermeable paint. And if any water gets in behind here, uh, it will get in behind the, the paint and start cracking and then what happens is eventually that causes lots and lots of small cracks, micro cracks, right. and then it's become self-perpetuating. Yeah. But once you've got water... So I mean, yes, yeah, this situation here is the bit I say about the access to upstairs is gas meter. Oh yes. And it's yes. just a wooden, wooden panel that doesn't fit. Oh, so they, they can open this up. Yeah. And you've got cracks here which yeah, I, I see what you mean. There is probably and then oh, that's your um, and that's the best. That's your yes. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's effective. What, what can I say? So we we had we had the bathroom redone. You could also be getting some degree of interstitial condensation, not least because you've got the the uh, vent ducting just coming out of the back underneath of the stairs. And if the airflow is towards the house, then condensation could form in the void under the stairs. It's difficult to be 100% sure and these areas are always at risk. Uh, so I would say you you will just expect to get some degree of um, penetrating damp to the front. 